Okay, let's bring out the next company, right? From Wilmington, Delaware, we have Knowledge. Presenting for Knowledge is Bodo Hunan and Vincent Favarat. Give them a round of applause and bring them on out. Hi, I'm Bodo from Knowledge, turning the E in e-learning from electronic to extraordinary. Hi everyone, my name is Bodo, I'm from Knowledge, and we are the AI backend of EdTech. 200 billion is being spent on generating educational content every year. However, 98% of this content is both static and linear. Only 2% of it is dynamic. The reason for this, it takes such a lot of time and money to produce. But why is this a challenge we need to think about? It's no longer clear what problems our learners need to solve tomorrow nor is it clear what jobs will be available or what we should train them for. And yet, our educational systems are forced to guess because it'll take them months, if not years, to develop courses. But what if we could generate courses in real time? And that's where knowledge comes in. With Knowledge AI, we are able to generate interactive bite-sized e-education, e-learning packages, 100 times faster, plug-and-play ready for any learning environment. With Knowledge LX, we generate full learning experiences for any learning goal in near real time. Knowledge as a service is already being used by multiple platforms who can simply plug us in. We focus on being the behind-the-scenes AI-ready solutions provider, while our partners provide distribution through their platforms. We've worked carefully with the teams at Canvas, Google Classroom, Microsoft, and Ilias to launch the first few integrations right here on stage today with further integrations being launched every few weeks until the end of the month, and uh, end of the year. This provides us a huge market opportunity. We already have 58,000 educators using knowledge who reach 3.8 million learners, and we signed just about a million co in contracts over the last few months. Some key clients include the NAESP here in the US, the Paris School System, and top business schools in Europe. Based on current conversion data, we estimate 5 million in ARR by the end of 2024, with 1.5 million already soft committed. The team that is bringing this all together has had successful exits in AI companies and edtech products acquired by Google. And collectively, we bring in backgrounds in cognitive science, AI, pedagogy, and collective intelligence. Let's move to demo, please. Now, in this demo, we're going to show you how we can generate bite-sized educational content, which would usually take us about 40 hours to produce, but we're going to do this in just a few minutes. All we need to do is to get started is provided some source material. In this case, I'm going to provide a YouTube link. It then goes ahead and generates bite-sized educational content. Here we have an example. It's created an interactive video that includes pop-ups of all the key terms, as well as quiz questions. But we don't just stand there. We also generate a glossary of all the terms with their definitions, some flashcards to help the learner study, a whole bank of quiz questions specifically designed to help the learner understand what's most important about whatever material we just uploaded. We also generate drag the word assessments, a summary of everything being taught, as well as a learn dashboard that describes what the learner has been doing. But we don't just stop there. We generate additional 12 interactives that include games like find the word and crosswords. But we also generate teacher materials to help the teacher design lessons based on this content. They can then customize this and then export it to whichever learning environment they use. And that's it. What used to take 40, 50 hours can now be done in just minutes. Let's go back to slides, please. Institutions are reporting that it's a 100x reduction in cost and time to produce this type of educational content. Educators are reporting a significant increase in completion and retention rates. And all of this combines to provide us really high NPS and product market fit scores. However, we take this a whole lot further with Knowledge LX, which is currently in early alpha. We connect learners with their desired learning goals be it getting a job, completing a project, or obtaining a qualification. 
We do this by generating a latent space of all the concepts that lie between the learner's current understanding and their learning goal. Here, they interact with bite-sized educational content and learn from experts all around the world. Now, while we were working on this, something deeply per personal happened. And I always keep, I get emotional about this, but while we were working on this, we needed to test this out in the real world. My daughter suddenly gets really sick, and she loses the use of her arms. Her arms get paralyzed. So we needed to build a brain-controlled exoskeleton to help her move. But as you can imagine, there's no course for how to do this. So instead, we used Knowledge LX to generate for us a whole learning experience. We learned how to 3D print. We learned about electronics. We learned about brain-machine interfaces and signal processing. We learned from experts all around the world. What should have taken us several years to learn and build was completed in just seven months. We built a brain-controlled exoskeleton that allows her to move now. This is the future of education we can provide to our learners, a future where we can tap into the learner's intrinsic motivation and generate real-life learning experiences in real time. We invite you to join us. We are currently recruiting top talent from around the world. You can reach us at knowledgeout.io, and we are also integrating with learning management systems all around the world. Thank you for your time. That was wonderful. OK, let's start with Mark this time. Great. Um, thanks so much for that presentation. What sort of schools or companies do you think benefit most from this? Like, where's your starting point? It seems like there's so many different types of schools, companies, online networks that could benefit. Yeah. But where are you kind of starting? Where We're does this starting off from? focused on K-12 and higher ed, um, mainly here in the US and the UK. This is because we are initially launching English. However, in two weeks, we are launching five additional languages. And then we're exploring, uh, expanding to, to LATAM and various other European nations. Uh, that's our core focus at the moment. However, we get a lot of interest from corporates. So we get about 50% of our in inbound leads are corporates. So we are exploring that, even though we are currently focused on, ed on, on academic. And given that focus, what's your distribution strategy? Like, how do you get in front of these folks? Who do you target? Yeah, distribution is primarily indirect. So we are partnering, like, like you saw on the slides, we partnered with Canvas, Microsoft Teams, Google Classroom, Ilias, with a number of additional partners in, uh, or integrations in the pipeline. It's through their platforms. So their platforms have been designed many years ago, and they're very rigid, they're very linear, they're very old school. They can plug us in and now suddenly generate interactive educational content on the fly with, with, with pathways to any learning environment. So, that's, so we are trying to to upgrade the existing infrastructure, allowing, allowing us to use their existing distribution mechanisms. Gotcha. Thanks. Preeti? First, thank you so much for sharing your deeply personal journey with your company. Um, I was curious, how do you handle any underlying objections to the IP ownership as you point mm -hmm. the system to specific URLs to generate the content? Does yep. the teacher, in this case, have to have the rights to the content, or are they using Creative Commons, for example? Um, so, so we are approaching this very much like any, any um, uh, authoring tool would. We'd require the user to understand what rights they have to their content. Um, this is also part of the way that we are quite unique. We require the educator to be in the driver's seat. We also require the educator to provide us some source material and I know this wasn't directly asked, but this is quite unique to us. That source material not only becomes what we generate content from, but it also becomes ground truth. We don't uh, allow the AI to generate anything that's hallucinative because we use that as ground truth. Morgan? Thank you, as Preeti mentioned, for sharing the personal story. And I'm sorry you went through that, although it, what an incredible case study. That's wild. Um, so I've seen a lot of like AI education, things in the middle of that. And this is kind of like the everything everywhere all at once, like you're doing worksheets and videos and you can do K-12 and, and, and. So my first question was Mark's question about like, where are you starting? But more specifically, I'm curious, NFX stands for network effects. So I have to ask, yeah. um, like what are the network effects to your go-to-market strategy? And then a side question that you can throw in there is when you're integrating with these platforms, are you white labeling or do you plan for knowledge to be like a household name? Um, 
Okay, so the, so the first, the network effects. We got several, well, we got three main networks that at play. One is the, the latent space that we generate, the latent space, the underlying latent space of everything you can learn. Um, so there's, there's definite network effects at play there. The network effects also come into account when we are tapping into educators around the world who would help in that learning process because we recognize that content can only get you about 20% through the learning experience. The rest of the 80% is, is done through your interactions with learners and experts. And, and so that's what we did with, with my daughter and I. It was experts around the world that, had that, that provided us most of what we learned. Um, and then I forgot you the last part of your question. Oh, the white labeling, like when oh, you're integrating labeling, with yes. these platforms. Yeah. So maybe yep. on this front again. And so the paying customer for us is the institution. It's uh, school districts and countries, right? We leverage the learning management system as a powerful way to create volume deals and to reach 1.5 billion learners through their channels. Um, that means that we really position ourselves as a vertical B2B AI as a service company. And um, this allows us not to um, fail by trying to sell directly to the teachers or, or directly to the learners who don't really have the power to buy, you know, the, the, the buying power of that. Tess? I promise I'll be quick. Please you mentioned do. the three go-to-market customer profiles, K-12, uh, institutions, mm -hmm. countries, whatnot. Tell us a little bit about the business model. You said you'll end the year at five million of top line, mm -hmm. the aggregation across those three, and how, how we're pricing it for those. Yes, so the... Mm -hmm. Business model is basically a yearly license from the institution. So on average, it's 10K per institution, right? And we bring a friction. So we work with product-led growth on the teacher base so that they adopt the technology and they use it as a free trial. But we bring friction so that they recommend the tool to the administrators. And there we cut the deal in a top-down approach with our BizDev team, but we automate the sales process to 75%, ideally, so that when we push this large integration, so either in deep integrations in white label uh, or semi-deep integration in the, in the marketplaces, then we have an influx of, of, of users from there, and that allows us to automate this lead generation, this, this deal closing uh, at scale. So we have uh, you know, around 1,000 schools already uh, with us for that, and our goal is to uh, reach basically 10 million teachers and 1 billion learners until the end of the year. And we are well on our way to achieve that. Great. Thank you very so much, Helia. I got to cut that off. So oh, give them a round of applause. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, you all.